Well, you ready? <laughs> okay, the last lesson was indefinite integration by substitution. Talk about what that means. That means this. That is an indefinite integral. That means, hey, find an antiderivative. Definite integration by substitution is, just reviewing a little bit here, where we find the actual numerical answer. And we could check it on a calculator, but what if this is calculator inactive? What if it's something that we couldn't use a calculator for? Like, it just had abstract things in there, like f of 2x is equal to this, and blah, 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 you know. So let's do this. First of all, let's go for what I think would be obvious, which would not require this lesson. So I'm going to very quickly come over here to the side, and what I really could do is the integral from 0 to 1 of x cubed plus x dx, and then we'll use the fundamental theorem of calculus, meaning antiderivative of x cubed would be 1 fourth x to the fourth. Antiderivative of x is 1 half x squared, and all that is from 0 to 1. So 1 fourth times 1 to the fourth plus 1 half times 1 squared minus plugging in a 0 gives me a 0, plugging in a 0 gives me a 0. So I have 1 fourth plus 1 half which gives me 3 fourths, done. Now, if you're like, wow, that was easy, I hear you. why don't we do them all like that? They don't all work like that. This is a really good problem to kind of start the idea with. So we're gonna pretend like we don't know that, even though I'm gonna keep it here, and we're going to do U substitution on this, but there's a catch to it. With definite integration with U substitution, again, we have these numbers, there's something we're gonna to have to do with those numbers that's gonna be a little bit special. So assuming that we don't already know the answer and we did it the old-fashioned way, and it is 3 fourths, give me a second as I check my own work. 1 fourths, yep, yep, I think we're good, 3 fourths. I'm going to go ahead and say that u is the innermost function, which would be x squared plus 1. So x squared plus 1. And so the derivative of that would be 2x dx. So if we go through this whole thing of let's underline stuff and identify stuff, uh, let's start writing. This would be the integral from, don't write 0 and 1 yet. That's kind of the big idea in this lesson. Kind of the big idea. That is a big idea. We have a u right there. And that u is, there it is. It's taken care of. Well, what we don't have is x dx. And we need there to be, well, x dx. So we're going to get x dx, which means, I need to quit grabbing random markers, and divide by 2. So 1 half du. So this over here should say 1 half du. Okay, sounds good. I'd love to keep going, but pause. Here's what happened. You just changed the entire inner structure of this definite integral. Because you did, you need to change what goes into the integral. Okay? This is no longer a 1. This Sorry, this is no longer a zero, it is now a one. I will tell you in a second where that one comes from. This is no longer a one, it is now a two. Now it looks like you're just adding one to each of them. Hold that thought, because that's not what's happening here. Okay, so before I proceed with all this stuff, let me underline something in red. X dx is one half du, everything's accounted for. But, green marker. This one right here was a zero, but because we changed the inner structure of all the stuff and we plugged in a, instead of x squared plus one, we have u, we're going to take zero and plug it into the x in the u function and crank out its u equivalent, okay? This thing has to do with x's. This thing has to do with u's. So we have to change these numbers to match their equivalent of what was x, now it's u, okay? Zero squared plus one, zero squared plus one is one. All right, one goes right here. One squared plus one is two. Just a coincidence that you just kind of added one to each of them, but that only worked in this particular case with these particular numbers. Let's move on. Antiderivative, doing the same idea here, fundamental theorem of calculus. Add one to the exponent, old coefficient divided by new exponent, that would be one fourth, and we're gonna go from one to two. 
<laughs> Check this out, it's gonna be great. So one fourth. Now at this point, usually you'd be like, well, a u is equal to x squared plus one. We'll plug that back in. Yeah, you can. That's another way of doing it. It's a third way of doing this one. We're not gonna do that one yet. We might do that in a different problem. But for this one, we're just gonna say that, well, two is u, so two squared minus, okay, plug a one in, one fourth, plug a one in. So I'm gonna have one fourth, two squared. Well, two squared is four, one fourth of four is one. Okay, minus one fourth times one, that's one fourth, and I get three fourths. Same answer, different method. Okay, which one's easier? This one, but not all of these, like I'm screaming at you, but not all of these, you're going to be able to just, oh, let's distribute and do what we've been doing. Wanted to start with one that was simple-ish, okay? All right, we're gonna move on to the next problem and then I've shown you uh, what we can sometimes do. I've shown you what we can always do and then I wanna show you a different way as well that sometimes pops up on multiple choice. I'm super tempted right now super duper tempted to do it, but I'm not, I'm not. Okay, let's move on to the next problem. And the next problem is also a definite integral. So it's gonna require us to do some, well, u substitution based on the way it's gonna be structured, but changing the numbers of the interval to match the reassignment of variables. And it is, oh, also from zero to one, lucky us. Zero to one sine of pi x dx. Okay. As I look at this, and I have my calculator taken from me, and I'm thinking, oh man, I've got to figure out the antiderivative of sine of pi x. I realize that sine of pi x is a composite function. U substitution undoes composite functions. This is a composite function. I sometimes call them complicated because they look complicated. It doesn't look too complicated, but doing this without U substitution, at least in your head, falls apart. The inner function, is pi x. The derivative of pi x is pi dx. I don't want pi dx, I want one dx. So I'll get my one dx, and I've got my one by dividing by pi. So I have one over pi du. Okay, let's move on. Because I am, <laughs> hang with me now, because I am using u substitution on a definite integral, I need to not only change the guts of what I'm doing, change things from x's to u's, which should simplify things. See, simplified. I should also reassign my interval numbers, what we would call a and b, to go into here, and I will crank out new inputs instead. All right, let's finish this first though. One over pi du, so one over pi, you can put that in the front if you want, du. One over pi could be factored out in front of the whole integral. So what goes here, let's write it. The thing that goes here is what happens if I plug a zero in for x. These are x's, x, 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 x. This is u, 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 u. So I'm gonna have pi times zero which of course is gonna give me zero. So that one didn't really change, nothing too special there. You know, nobody's really all worked up about that one. This one, however, I'm gonna plug a one in right here. And when I do, I'm gonna have, well, pi times one, that happens in your head, of course. And that of course gives me pi, so that one truly did get changed. And now I'm ready to take an antiderivative. So when I take this antiderivative, I am going to move on to the next one. So, Antiderivative of sine would be negative cosine of u. Um, oh, by the way, notice I didn't put plus c on that last problem, and no, that was not a mistake, okay? We've been through this. I don't need a plus c on a definite integral. Just don't need it. It's not gonna be necessary. One over pi, and the reason why is because if I had plus c and then plus c, and then I do that subtraction thing that happens with the fundamental theorem of calculus, the c's would cancel anyway, so I even put them. So all this is gonna go from zero to pi. Pause right there. Okay, this is right. We will continue computing this. Switching colors for a second though. I'm gonna to switch to blue, not to be confused with the work that I did here. If you would like to 
do this a little differently from this step, or depending on how you think about it from other steps. You could say that this is equivalent to negative one over pi cosine of, oh, what's u? It's pi x. But no longer am I gonna go from zero to pi. I have now reintroduced x, so I need to go back to my original x numbers, okay? So this is this. I'm gonna stick with what I originally had. So a minute ago when we were doing that first problem and I was like, there's another way, it's a little tricky. This is the other way, it's a little tricky. And it's just simply the fact that you're kind of working back towards your x, which means you're back to these x numbers, not these u numbers, okay? Totally valid right here, totally valid. I'm not gonna do that. Plug in a one, plug in a zero, you're gonna get the exact same thing. The work's gonna look almost exactly alike. But we've come this far, don't look back. Negative one over pi, cosine of pi, it goes in, minus negative one over pi, cosine of zero. By the way, um, I often have a habit of, and it's a good habit-ish, to when, I have the habit of not finishing my sentences. I have a habit of just not plugging in a zero when it's a zero, because I know it subtracts and becomes zero. That's with polynomials, only polynomials. Not with this, because cosine of zero, it's not zero, right? Cosine of pi is not zero either. So negative one over pi, cosine of pi is negative one, okay? Plus one over pi, cosine of zero is one. So what we really have is, and I'm double checking my work here, cosine of zero, yep, that's the x value at 180 degrees, yep, 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 yep. I have one over pi plus one over pi, I think I was trying to do my pi too prematurely. That got a little wiggly there. That's uh, two over pi. And that's it. That's it. It totally works. All right. We'll proceed in the next video with the next problem, which is a little more extensive.